Thank you for being here. And I, I'm going to say this. Church wouldn't be the same without you. Every one of us matter. So thank you for being here. Someone just seeing you worship and smiling and clapping and yelling and just being here, just being here means a lot to the Lord. It means a lot to every one of us. And if you're sad and you're broken and you've had a tough week, I want you to just open up and receive. Your, God loves you. He has a plan for your life. And it's not a plan for you to be depressed and broken. It's a plan for you to be restored and heal. God wants to heal your broken heart. God wants to heal you from the inside out. Let's give God some praise and let's welcome Christian. Man. Man, don't we have the best pastor in the world? Can we give our pastor a big round of applause? Thank you, Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa for all you do for us. Can we give it up now to Jesus who deserves all the praise and the glory? There is no one like Jesus. Come on. Man, God is good. You can see there's people still getting baptized right now as we speak. Lives are being transformed. Wasn't it amazing hearing those testimonies tonight? Man, I'm so grateful to be able to bring the word tonight. I, I'd really, this is just an honor. And I want us to all have an open heart to hear a word that's gonna come from the Bible. We're gonna go verse by verse through, through scriptures here. And we're gonna let the Bible teach us tonight. We're gonna let God teach us tonight. Is that okay? Well, let's do it. Bow your heads with me as we open our hearts. Father, we thank you that tonight is a message and a word to encourage us, your church. And Father, I pray, Lord, that you would speak directly to each of us, God. We want to hear from you. Lord, whatever it is we've gone through all week or all day, God, we're ready, Lord, to surrender it all at your feet and to receive all the good things you have for us, Lord. We love you, God, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say amen. You may be seated. All right. Well, we continue in the book of 1 Corinthians, how many have your daily growth book? How many have been in your daily growth book? Isn't it been a blessing? We're going to pick up 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to be going from verses 1 through 11. We're going to see how much we get through tonight. But the purpose of tonight's message is to understand who the source of power is. Someone say the power source. That's the title of tonight's message. We're going to understand who the power source is and what he gives us to carry out, the gifts that he gives us to carry out and to operate in his will. We're going to learn that there are all different types of gifts or we'll learn even what that means. There's different things that God gives us, but we will also learn that we are all dependent on the same source. There's not one person that's better than the other. And there's not one person that's lesser than the other. We are all dependent fully on God. How many know just because you've been saved 20 years doesn't mean you need God any less than day number one you had the Lord, right? We need God. So we're going to learn how we function as one. We're going to learn how God has called us all to use these gifts that he gives us for each other, to serve each other. He, after all, is the power source, and he gives us the gifts that we need. So turn with me. We're going to go verse by verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting from verse 1. It says this, now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities the Spirit gives. Okay, let me give you a little context of what's happening here. Paul is writing to a church in the city of Corinth. Okay, so he's talking to Corinthians. That's why it's called Corinthians. And this is his first letter that he wrote to the Corinthians. Now, as he's writing this letter, a lot of these people, they came from different kinds of backgrounds. They used to worship pagan gods. They came from a crazy background and a lifestyle. Anybody can re relate with the Corinthians today? He came from a crazy background or lifestyle. So he's talking now to them. And they have some questions about these spiritual things that God is giving us, these special abilities, these spiritual gifts. You might have some questions about what is a spiritual gift? Well, we're all in the same boat here. So let's keep going. Verse one, it says, now dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities the Spirit gives, gives us, 
Uh, he says, I don't want you to misunderstand this. Verse two, you know that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along in worshiping speechless idols. So they had these questions and here's the problem that they were running into. They wanted to learn about these things from God, but because they came from this past, this pagan worship and the stuff they used to do, it was starting to hinder their understanding about the spiritual gifts that God was giving. And it was starting to kind of intersect. They, they were mixing the world and spiritual things. Now, how does that relate to us? Well, sometimes our past, the enemy will use our past to, to hinder you from being used by God. Now, this happens sometimes when you feel super guilty about your past. Or maybe you feel super confused. How come maybe uh, uh, there's some things that you've gone through that you maybe don't feel worthy to be used by God? Or you come from a certain upbringing and you feel like you're not qualified to be used by God. And maybe you're just, we've misunderstood that, you know, this whole God thing, maybe it's just for other people and it's not really for me. Oh, uh, maybe the guy up there, he's the gifted one. The, the people that are singing, Nico Eme, they're the gifted ones, and I'm just supposed to come and receive. That's a misunderstanding. And sometimes the enemy uses your past to try and prevent you from walking into your future. Well, I got good news for you. God reminds us this. And as Pastor Marco said earlier, we can forget about the past. And sometimes we gotta forgive ourselves from the things we once did because after all, God has forgiven you. How many are grateful that we serve a God that is willing to forget your past? Not just forgive you, but he doesn't remember the things that you did in your past, the sin that we once committed. God's the only one that could do that. Now you may remember your past, you may remember where you came from, and it's probably a good thing we remember because it keeps us grateful that God has saved us and set us free from those things. How many remember what God set you free from and you're grateful that he set you free? Now you may be saying, tonight I'm still stuck in that. Well, good news, today could be day one where you walk in that freedom now and forever. So he's saying, I don't, I don't I don't want you to misunderstand. I don't want you to misinterpret what these things are. You were once pagans, you were led astray, you were swept along by these things. So let's define really quick. What are these spiritual things he's talking about? Well, I want you to write this down. Spiritual gifts, this is how, I, I've, the, the, the clearest way I could find, the definition I could find and define it. It's a godly ability that allows us to serve as God's instrument. I'll say that again, it's a godly ability that allows us to serve as God's instrument. And I got good news for you, there is no shortage of spiritual gifts in the church. There is no shortage. There is no, and you may think, there's no room for me. There's no space for me. God ran out. God made a mistake with me. That is all a lie from the devil, and it is not true. There is no shortage of spiritual gifts, and I believe God tonight wants to let you know that he has a gift for you to be used by God, and he wants to use you to do great things, to reach people, and to touch people with his love. How many are excited about that? So let's keep going. Let's go to verse three. He says, so I want you to know that no one speaking by the, pop, by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So now, what's happening here? This is a reminder, and you'll see this repeated over and over in this portion of Scripture. This, portion, this, this phrase, uh, by the Spirit, or from the Spirit's power, it'll come up over and over again. This is a reminder that one thing is clear. We cannot do anything for the Lord. We cannot do anything in the house of God, any ministry, without being connected to the source of power. There's only one source we're connected to, and that's the Holy Spirit. So I gotta, here's a question. How do you know when you're using your gifts by the power of the Holy Spirit. How do we know that I'm using these gifts? And we're gonna talk and it's gonna, we're gonna look at a list of gifts that the Spirit gives. Things like faith, things like healing, 
So some people you see up here, they got a gift to sing. Some of you maybe don't have that gift to sing. Praise the Lord, it's okay. The Lord loves your voice, okay, he loves it. Some of us, you have a gift of being organized. Some of you don't have that gift, praise God. But, but we have different gifts that God has given us and God has given us these specific gifts to be used to serve each other and to serve as God's instrument. So, but how do I know when I'm using my gifts by the power of the Holy Spirit? Because here's the truth. We can use those gifts for God or we can use those gifts for our own selfish gain. And this is a dangerous point that we have to figure out, how do I know when I'm using it by the power of the Holy Spirit? Because I cannot, I cannot serve God without the power of the Holy Spirit. I cannot minister to others without the power of the Holy Spirit. If I do anything without God's love, without his power, it's all in vain. So I don't use my gift for my selfish gain. I don't use the gift so I can get ahead. I use the gift for the glory of God. So here are three things, three ways to indicate how we know we're using our gifts by the power of the Holy Spirit. Number one, your gift brings glory to Jesus. Your gift brings glory to who? Jesus. Not to me. Someone say, not to me. Now, a lot of times we think that God is giving you a gift so that you can be world famous, so that you can build a platform. I'm gonna make a big one day. You know, maybe God might make your name more famous. Maybe he may make you famous, but it is not so that you can be Mr. Popular or Mrs. Popular. It is for this fact, so that the name of Jesus can be lifted up and more people can know about him. Now, how do I know I'm operating by the power of the Holy Spirit? It's because I want to glorify Jesus everywhere I go. And I know when I leave places, when I use my gift, I know that the name of Jesus is being lifted up and more people know about his love. What, what does it mean to glorify Jesus? It means to tell people and to be an example and to demonstrate how good and loving he is. So if you leave a room and people are just, are just bragging about how awesome you are, then maybe you didn't use your gift to glorify him. But if you leave the room and people are, are not talking about how awesome you are, but how awesome Jesus is, then maybe you accomplish what God wanted you to accomplish with your gift. It says in 2 Corinthians 9, 13, it says, as a result of your ministry, as a result of your service, it says they will give glory to God. It should always be a, a direct result of when we serve, you know, and right now you got a lot of people serving in ministry. Tonight you've probably seen a lot of people that were serving. There's people still serving right now, serving on the cameras. There's people serving in the parking lot. There's people serving up here on the worship team. Some people serving behind the stage, directing all of these screens. There's people serving everywhere. And, and but when we do this, we do it for one purpose, to give God some glory, to lift his name up, amen? Number two, how do I know I'm using my gifts by the power of the Holy Spirit? Number two, uh, it's the opposite now. You're not using your gift to bring glory to yourself. It says in James 4, 6, as the scriptures say, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. We gotta be very careful. We do not wanna be on the opposing side from God. I'm telling you, there's one person that you do not want to be the enemy too. You do not want to be God's enemy. And I'm not saying you're an enemy from God, but the reality is if your motive is about you, then God will oppose your plan. Because God always operates out of a place of love for others and love for us. And so he wants us to walk in that same heart that when you operate, when you love, when you serve people, when you use your gift, you do it out of a place for love for others, not love for yourself. So that looks like a lot of things, like I just serve because I, I want recognition, or I just serve because I want a next level of promotion, or I just serve because I want position and I want power. Wrong spirit. That's the wrong heart. We do not serve to try and climb the spiritual ladder, the spiritual rank. I'm gonna just get closer to Pastor Marco and I'm gonna be the next campus pastor of the way Hawaii, and I'm gonna be. Everybody, everyone's claimed that already, okay? But God's gonna choose one of you. I don't know who it's gonna be, but <laughs> the way Honolulu, Lord, send me. 
Here we go. See, your gift is not so you can be chilling on the beach all day and be served. No, your gift is so that someone else who's hurting, who's broken, who's lost, who was where you once were, can hear about the love of Jesus and receive his power and receive his love and receive breakthrough. Come on, you've tasted and seen how good God is. Now go show somebody else how good he is. It's not to receive glory, it's to give God glory. Maybe, some, maybe, let, maybe let's just do a little bit of self-evaluation. Maybe we're wondering, how come it seems like all my plans, all my endeavors, everything I set out to do seems to be shot down. It seems I can't prosper. There's a lid, there's a hindrance, there's something. Maybe sometimes, and this is going to sound crazy, maybe it's not the enemy. Maybe it's our own pride putting us in opposition to God. This is why humility is such a powerful place to be. Humility is not weakness. Humility is power. When you are humble, you are under the covering of the power of God, of his spirit. And now not, he doesn't oppose you. As a matter of fact, he endorses you. He pushes you forward. He takes you levels you've never been. Why? Because he doesn't have to worry about you trying to steal his glory. But he knows you're going to give him all the glory. And then Jesus' name will be glorified wherever you go. Come on, how many want to be, want to make Jesus famous wherever you go? I, I hope that I'm a nameless person when I die and that Jesus' name is more glorified than anything else. I'm not trying to be famous. I'm trying to make Jesus famous. I'm not trying to say credit. I'm trying to give the spirit credit. He's the source of power. He is everything we work through. He is all that we have and all that we need. Come on, give Jesus glory tonight. Number three, how do you know you're using your gifts by the power of the Holy Spirit? Number three, people are being served as a result. Or there are needs being met. If, the, if you're not meeting anyone's needs, then what's the purpose of the gift? The gift that God has given you is to meet the needs of the people, to serve them. It's not to perform, it's not to entertain, it's to love and serve a need. And that's why, that's why there's so many ministries here at the church. Here at our church, there are over 100 ministries that operate just on a weekly, even a daily basis. There are things we do that you probably never even heard of. There's a ministry for that? Yup. There's a ministry for a lot of things. There's all kinds of things. Why? Because there are a lot of needs right here in our city and in this world. There's right now people that are suffering the loss of family people that they love, they, they're grieving that. We have a grief ministry. There's people that are hurting, and right now, they're, they're locked up, they're in prison, no one's visiting them, so we have a prison ministry. We're gonna go visit them. There's people in our city that do not have food. The grocery prices have gone crazy, so they don't know how they're gonna buy food for their kids. We have adopt the block and we bring groceries to their door. There's ministries for needs all over. Matter of fact, we don't have enough ministries. There are not, we need more ministries. We need, we, there are more needs out there. But thank God, when God calls us to serve the people, he's gonna empower you with whatever you need to meet those needs. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4.10, so be good servants and use whatever gift he's given you in a way that will best serve each other. Your gift is to serve each other, not to serve our own needs. So we cannot use the power of the Holy Spirit to glorify ourselves. But when we are connected to God, when we are serving him humbly, when we are serving others, then it will be very evident that God gets the glory from you using your gifts. That was just verses one through three. Now let's go to verse four, who's with me? Come on, the Bible's so jam-packed with goodness and revelation and power. How many just love the word? We need to fall in love with the word again. We're on a journey now. Go with me, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. This, the, he continues. Remember, this letter he's writing to the Corinthians, it continues. Verse 4 says, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. Someone say, he's the source. It says there are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. He's, it says God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. See, there are three things we can see here. 
There are gifts, there's service, and there's works. Say, say with me, say gifts, say service, and works. And I want to define what those three things are so it's clear. A gift, again, we talked about, it's this godly ability that God allows us, gives us, so that we can serve as his instrument. But when you look at where it says there's different kinds of services, there's a different kind of service, that is like a, another, another word for that is a ministry or service. There's different offices, and this is gonna get super deep, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna, we're gonna keep going. How many have heard of those terms pastor or evangelist, prophet, teacher, apostle? These are gifts, these are also ministries. These are, you know, Pastor Marco, we call him pastor because he operates under that. God gave him that. Doesn't mean that God has called all of us to be a pastor. God has called you, right. Someone said God has called us some, some of you to be a teacher. God has called maybe some to be a prophet. Maybe God didn't call you to be any of those. But that's okay because remember, God has given us each something different, something unique, something special. And then there's that word works. That word works means the result that comes from using our gifts. This is, this is what happens when we use our gifts. But I just want to say this. Regardless of the gift, regardless of the title, regardless of the ministry, regardless of, the, regardless of any of it, point is this, it all comes down to the same power source. There's only one source. There's only one person we connect to for this. We are all on the same boat. We all need to rely totally and completely on God to do what he's called us to do. Your ministry might be super unique. It might look way different than the person next to you, but you still rely on the same one to get it done. Your ministry might look like one way or another, but it does not matter. We rely totally and completely on the Holy Spirit. But this is why we cannot look down on someone who has a different gift than you. Just because Pastor Mark goes up here and he preaches doesn't mean he looks down on you. Look, and here I'll say this too. You might be super gifted in something and you might love it passionately. It might just, oh, it might just keep you up at night how passionate you are about it. You might be such an evangelist that you think, man, everybody should be evangelizing. Everyone needs to be telling people about Jesus all the time, every day, wherever they go and never talk about nothing else except Jesus. <laughs> Don't talk about sports, talk about Jesus. Don't talk about nothing. Don't talk about your kids. Don't talk about none of it. Now, an evangelist might be that passionate, but it doesn't mean if God has given you that strong of a gift that we should look down on somebody because they're not as passionate about that as you. That just means you probably have that gift. Maybe they don't. So the Bible says this in Philippians 2, verses three through four. It says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. In other words, he's saying, don't look down on people, treat others as better than you. Remember, when God gave you a gift, he wants you to be a servant to people. This is the point of this scripture. We're trying to get back to the heart of serving others and loving people. But I'll say this, the opposite is also true. We cannot envy someone else's gift. It's a dangerous place to be. We should not look, let's say pastor's up here preaching, we should not envy him as, oh, I'm not as important in the kingdom because I'm not up there with the microphone. That's a lie from the enemy. We should not envy people's gifts to the point that we look at ourselves as less important or less valuable in the kingdom of God. I'm looking at, I wish I could look everybody in the eyes and speak to you directly from God's heart and tell you right now how important you are in this day and age in the kingdom of God. You are necessary. Your gift is necessary. Your gift is valuable because it came from a powerful source from the Holy Spirit. So don't, don't beat yourself up. Don't envy, don't, don't look at yourself as less than. 
when you compare, try and compare yourself like to other people. Galatians 6, four through five says, don't compare yourself with others. It says, just look at your own work to see if you have done anything to be proud of. You must each accept the responsibilities that are yours. See, there's a reason that God gave you the gift he gave you. Its use is important for the whole body. Amen? Verse seven, I'm, I think I'm making good time. Let's keep going. Verse seven, it, 1 Corinthians 12, seven says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. Gary was telling me actually in the back, he, he said this, pay attention to what matters to you. Pay attention to what compels you. Pay attention to what maybe pulls on your heart, what's important to you. Those might be the things that God is calling you, the gifts that he's given you. Your gifts, again, remember, they're intended to help other people. That's why God made those things super important to you. You might, be super, you might be drawn to something very specific here in this church, like helping people. You might be drawn to organizing things. You might be drawn to leadership. You might have such strong faith. Whatever it is, pay attention to those things because that might be the very gift that God has given you. So I'm gonna show you an illustration. It says in Romans 14, 19, it says, let us aim for harmony in the church. Some say harmony and try to build each other up. That's what the scripture says. So we know this, the spiritual gift that was given for, so that we could help each other. Your gift by itself, apart from the body, is no good. Let's just I'll give you an example. Let's just say right, my hand right now, I'm able to hold this mic, I'm able to stand on my two feet, but let's just say, see this, my hand is useful right now, it's holding this mic. <laughs> but let's just say I didn't have this hand anymore. Let's say I separated this hand from my body, a little graphic, I know. That hand would have no function or no use anymore. It would not be able to operate in its intended purpose anymore. And the same goes for us. When God give, has given you a gift, it does not operate in the same way if it's separated from the body. There is no part of your body that can function if you separate it from the rest of the body. None of it. As strong as your arms are, you, you separate it from the body, your arm is automatically weak. As strong as, as, as clear vision you could see from your eyes, if those eyes are gone, if you pull them out, they, do no long, they no longer function. And the same goes for us. As strong as we may think we are, as powerful as may, we may think we are, if we disconnect ourselves from the body and from the power source, we lose all functionality. We lose all power. We lose all ability to make an impact in the world. That's why God did not make us as islands. He did not create us to be isolated. He created us to exist as one body, functioning as one person, as one unit in one family. So that's even why you have to have a home church because we function out of a family. I can't do service and ministry and operate and love people if I don't have a place to belong, a family to belong to. I'll give you an example. Here's just a, 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 a visual illustration of what that looks like. There's a, anyone ever played instruments in high school? You were like part of band? Anyone part of band before? Okay, okay, I see you. Okay, that kind of makes sense a little bit, a little bit of sense. <laughs> Ben, you know, anyone ever played the tuba, that big one? Any tuba players in here? Okay, not, not a very popular instrument, I know. Super heavy, super expensive, and you can't do solos really with the tuba. If you don't know what a tuba is, look at this video really quick. This is what a tuba looks like, and this is a tuba solo. It's gonna, it, just get ready. This is not gonna be a, a fun experience. Can we turn it up? Okay. Okay, that was pretty cringe, right? There is no good from that, a little tuba solo. But I wanna show you what a tuba sounds like when it's a part 
of the orchestra, when it's a part of a symphony, when it's playing along with all the other gifts and instruments that God gives us. But I also want you to pay attention to this video because there's one person that's directing it. There's not five, there's not six people, there's one person that's directing the orchestra, that's deciding who plays what and when they play and how they play it, and that person is God. Pay attention to this video and look at what a tuba sounds like in a symphony. Take a look at this. Turn it up. Now, wasn't that beautiful? That makes me want to go to one of those. Just be, have a classy night where I just dress up in a suit and watch an orchestra. But here's the point. That man up there, God is a conductor of how you use your gift. And as, here's the thing, there shouldn't be one person that gets all the glory except one name. His name is Jesus Christ. He gets all the glory from the way we sound as a body. He gets all the glory when we work in harmony with each other. He gets all the glory when we're united, when we function as one, when we use our gifts for his glory. He gets all the glory. How many want Jesus to receive all the glory? If we want that, then use your God-given gift and in the body and serve each other. I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish this, but I, I'm just gonna read through the rest in eight, verses eight through 10. Here's some of the gifts that God gives. You'll see them. There's a, that he gives a, a to one person, he gives a ability to give wise advice. To another, he gives a special knowledge. To another, he gives faith. To another, he gives healing. To another, he gives miracles. To another, he gives prophecy. To another, he gives discernment. To another, he gives the gift of tongues. And to another, he gives a gift of interpretation. You see, there's so many gifts. And God has given each one of us something very specific for the use to serve each other. To, to, to function as one body, as one symphony, as one unit, to serve each other, serve our city, serve the people, to love those around us, to take care of those with needs, and to give them glory. In the last verse, verse 11, it is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. We don't even decide that. The Spirit decides that for us. And trust me, He doesn't give you a rinky-dink gift. He gives you something handcrafted in heaven. He knew you before He formed you in your mother's womb. And He had this set aside for you since the beginning, since before the beginning of time. And He had your name written all over it. It's in mint condition. It's ready to go. And he has this gift for you. How many want to receive the gift that God has for you tonight? If the worship team can play. God has decided what gifts to give us. There's different gifts. I want to see really quick, by show of hands, and this is not a place to be ashamed or embarrassed at all. As a matter of fact, this is where we come to grow. It's like we're in class, we come here to grow. This is like a hospital, it's where we come to receive from God. Let me ask this, don't be ashamed. By a show of hands, how many, you just don't know what gift God has given you? I just don't know, I just don't, I really don't. It's okay, I think there's more people than that. I'm gonna give you time to raise your hands because I know just mustering up the courage to say, I don't know, I'm not sure. Look all those hands that went up, okay, that's fine. We've all been there, just so you know, it's not like you're born knowing. It wasn't a baby thinking, I'm gonna preach one day. You don't know that. As we, this is what I've learned. As you remain faithful 
on just one thing, on your relationship with God, just to remain faithful and consistent in your walk, pursuing him. Well, he's such a loving and a giving God. He's gonna pour out his gifts on you like crazy. So I'm gonna ask this really quick. Those that raise your hands and you're saying, I just wanna receive a gift from God. I just wanna receive something, a download. I wanna receive vision. I wanna receive the gift of faith. I wanna receive something. You know, the Bible says it's actually, we should do that. The Bible says we should pursue the gifts. So don't feel like you're guilty. Oh, I shouldn't pursue the gift. That's selfish of me. No, God wants you to pursue the gift so that you can use it to serve somebody. So it's okay to pursue it. So by a show of hands, how many, those that raise your hands and even those that didn't raise your hands, you're saying, I want to receive gifts from the Lord. I just want to receive something from God tonight. I want to receive something from the Lord. I want to receive a gift. I want to be used by God. Okay, great. Can those that raise your hand, can you stand up for me really quick? Just stand up wherever you're at. Let's give them a hand. That is awesome. That is awesome. We're going to do something a little different. Could you guys come up to the front really quick? What, what, here's what we're going to do. Go ahead, and it's okay. Come on, this is a place where we receive from the Lord. This is a place where we get a touch from God. Just come up to the front. This is awesome. This is awesome. This is great. See, you're coming up, why? Why are you coming up? Because remember, you're ready to receive a special gift from God to be used by God to serve people. This is, your, this is the motive of why we do this. This is why you're here. You come up because you're ready to say, you're saying this, God, I'm ready for you to use me. I'm ready for you to show me what gift that is so I can be used in the kingdom of God. Look how awesome this is, church. This is awesome. So I might need some help up here. And this is what we're gonna do very quickly. Altar team, we may have to just um, go to multiple people. The Bible says there's, some, there's something about when someone lays their hands on you, a leader, an elder, and we have a team up here, they're ready. When they lay their hands on you, there's, there's God endows or he gives these gifts. The Bible says fan into flames the gifts that you receive when, uh, through the laying on of hands. So right now you may have someone pray for you and you may receive uh, gifts from God, or, or it may just be that God begins to highlight these things. And in time, even, it could be tonight, could be in, in weeks to come, you may discover more and more what happened, what gift God gave you. And then what we do with them, we don't put a gift on a shelf. We don't let our gift collect gut dust. We use our gift. We use it in church. We use it to serve others. We use it in the ministry. So when we lay our hands on you, the next step, for, well, for all of us up here, is to get connected with some kind of ministry, a place where you can use your gift and a place where you can be used by God and, and serve other people. How many are ready for that right now? So I want you all to lift your hands right now. Everyone that came up here, we're gonna need some help up here too. But I want you to just lift your hands if you're up here. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. And we're just gonna pray for you. And altar team, we could just begin laying hands on everybody right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for every single person right now. Father, we lay our hands on them, God, in the name of Jesus. And as your word says, Father, right now, you're beginning to bestow or and endow, Lord, these gifts upon them, Father. These spiritual gifts to be used for your glory. These gifts, Father God, so that they can be used to touch others. These gifts, Father God, so they can be used to serve others, to care for others. If you're a pastor or a leader, I could use your help. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, you would give them the gift of faith, God to believe, Father, against any circumstance. They will have no fear of the world, no fear of problems. God, we pray you would deliver them even the gift of wisdom where they will know exactly what to do and they will have good sound judgment in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you would give them the gift, Father, Father of helps, Lord, where they will be able to help people and see need and have compassion on others in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, God, you would give them, Lord, the gift of healing where they will lay hands on 
people and they will be healed from sickness and from disease in the name of Jesus. God, we pray, Father, you would give them, Lord, gifts, Father, God, to be used to glorify your name. Gifts, Father, to teach the word. Gifts, Father, to minister the gospel. Gifts, Lord, to love people. Lord, I pray, Father, right now, Holy Spirit, fill them now in the name of Jesus with your gifts. Lord, if you're out there, stretch your hands up here and begin to pray. Begin to pray for your brothers and sisters who are up here right now. There it is. God is touching you in the name of Jesus. Touch your daughter right now. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Right now, she's receiving the gift. Pour it out, God, in the name of Jesus. There it is. Receive it. Receive all of it in the name of Jesus. We pray you would baptize your children right now with the gift of tongues to be able to pray in unknown languages, God. They've been desiring that gift, so release it, God, in the name of Jesus. Release it, God. Release the gift of tongues. We receive it now in the name of Jesus. We receive it now in the name of Jesus. Let your power go forth, God, in Jesus' name. Let him go. Let your power go forth in the name of Jesus. Touch them, Lord God, right now. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your power. We thank you for the gifts, God. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God's moving right now. You know, church, it was actually in a moment like this, a moment just like this. I was, I think, 15 years old. I was 15 years old and a call happened at the altar just like this. And I came up to the altar. Someone laid their hands on me. I'm not saying this happens to everybody all the time, but this is what happened to me. Someone laid their hands on me and I began to feel, it was the craziest thing. I began to feel the roof of my mouth. It was like electricity. It was three places, the roof of my mouth and on my hands and on my feet. And I didn't know what that meant. But as I began later to pursue God, I realized God was calling me to preach the word. God was calling me to lay hands and God was sending me with feet to go and to minister the word. God was showing me in a moment what I'm calling you to do. And he's gonna, he's doing that even now. There's people that are being touched by God right now, touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's never let these moments get old for us. Let's pursue God. Let's pursue the power source. Let's pursue his, the spirit of God because he has more for us, church. He has more for us. And I'll close with this. There's one gift all of us need, the gift of eternal life. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God, the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. We all need eternal life. When we die, we'll either spend uh, our, the eternity in judgment or eternity in heaven. And it all depends on the decision you make. If you're willing to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're willing to put your faith in Him, so tonight, if you want to receive Jesus, if you want to receive eternal life, just, I want you to raise your hand really quick. You're saying, I want to receive Jesus and receive eternal life right now. I want to receive that gift. Okay, stand up, stand up wherever you're at. If you raise your hand, stand up. There it is. Repeat this prayer after me. Actually, come forward. If you raise your hand, come to the front. Join us at the front up here. An altar worker, I don't know how we're going to get their info. Oh, we'll scan this code behind me. We're going to do that. But I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Everybody close your eyes and bow your head. Say, Jesus, thank you that you gave your son to die on the cross and give me the best gift in the world, the gift of eternal life. Forgive me for all of my sin. I, I, I've messed up. I, I've, I've, I've sinned against you. But I repent. I turn away from my old life and I'm ready to receive all that you have for me. From this moment forward, I want to live for you. I want to serve you. I want to be used by you. So use me, Lord. I receive your gift of eternal life and any spiritual gift that you have for me so that I can love others and bring your name glory. In Jesus' name I pray, and we all say amen. Can we stand to our feet now and give God a round of applause? Give him all the glory for all that he's done.
Church, we love you.